So, welcome. Uh, it's time to start. Uh, we're going to have a talk for about 45 minutes uh, about simple effects. And uh, uh, let's hope we will be able to uh, communicate to you um, how to use simple effects and uh, what simple effects is capable of doing. Um, my name is Hans Henry Sandbeck. Uh, I'm the uh, CEO of Sandbeck which is a startup company only one year old, uh, one and a half almost. So uh, what you see today is very fresh, very freshly baked, and you will see a solution which, is, which we think is very exciting, one, especially one feature. So, and this feature is now going to be presented for the first time today. And uh, let me introduce Florian, Florian Kiermeyer, who is the CTO of the company. And uh, we will try to introduce you to Simplifix. Um, how many of you guys have uh, any experience with uh, products like uh, um, JavaFX or, uh, okay, that's good, that's good. And uh, what about ScalaFX? Okay, very exciting, okay. Um, okay, what is, what is Simplifix? It's a DSL, uh, written to make programming simpler, which uh, sounds a little bit uh, trivial uh, or, or uh, um, yeah, uh, goes without saying, so to speak. And the domain which we started with, uh, at least, was to create user interfaces, so to speak, a tool to, uh, to make it easier to create um, applications basically using uh, SimpleFix, I'm sorry, JavaFX. And, uh, since uh, some months we have started to extend this to other areas which we will come back to. But um, uh, you can also consider us to be um, an enriched wrapper around uh, JavaFX, so to speak a replacement for Swing, which JavaFX is in any case. You're probably aware of that uh, Oracle has proclamated very clearly that Swing is, is a legacy. So if you want to use uh, uh, Java to create user interfaces today, it's, it's, uh, uh, and if you have a new project, I don't think Swing is, so to speak, a very, very good decision. So it would be probably uh, products like JavaFX, and if you um, use um, uh, Scala, then of course you have things like ScalaFX, or what we hope is that you will like SimpliFix, which is, as I said, basically a wrapper um, in, in the core. It's a wrapper around JavaFX, but we have uh, replaced certain parts of uh, JavaFX, which, uh, um, which we did because um, things like data binding, we, we find very, very um, important to have handy tools to deal with, especially when you write user interfaces especially when you have a lot of animations and, and, and when you have very modern paradigms, so to speak, for, for uh, the user interface. Um, so um, um, the data binding which we are offering is actually not containing anything from JavaFX at all. It's our own implementation and the same goes for animations um, which uh, is also offered by JavaFX but we <laughs> use our own solutions for that, which means, uh, of course, we can, we, you can still use the native um, methods of, of JavaFX, you can use all the APIs, they can be totally transparently used from SimpliFix, but uh, we think there is a handier, more efficient way of doing this uh, with our implementation of, especially data binding and animation and, uh, uh, in JavaFX you have like uh, 40, uh, 40, 41, 42 properties, property types. And uh, in SimpliFix we basically map it all down to one property. And this one property we call bindable. Uh, and and this, is, uh, this is contains a lot of features around data binding, um, triggering, uh, uh, anim creating animations and all those things we will which we'll get more into detail with as we move on today. So, of course it's written in Scala. Why? 
Why did we pick Scala? Because we came from, we came from the requirement side. We, uh, um, my background is um, from the media industry to create products for radio and TV stations. And I was uh, looking for some framework to create a new generation of, uh, of the product suites. And we had a swing experience behind us, which we thought was not very futuristic any longer. So a couple of years ago, we started to look at uh, products like, or frameworks like Adobe Air and Silverlight at that time. Of course, HTML and, uh, and GBT, uh, Grid from, from Google, uh, and a couple of others. And uh, the requirement was to have it run on as many platforms as possible. It should run on set-up boxes for TV. It should, uh, of course, run on any desktop. And it, of course, had to run on the mobile. So cross-platform was very important for us. Uh, then we uh, came along and we learned to know Java's, JavaFX. At that time, it was still the JavaFX script, uh, which um, now is, is uh, is an open source project called uh, Visage, uh, which is run by Steve Chin, who is also uh, leading the ScalaFX project, uh, who we have contact with. And, um, and uh, we, uh, we, we thought that JavaScript had a lot of very interesting um, paradigms in the language. It was also focusing very much on data binding. Um, but it did not really take off, and it did never reach uh, a maturity level which uh, could could make it be a candidate for industrial usage. So, so then we came along. With, uh, we, we found Scala, which uh, which is two three years ago, and because of the flexibility of Scala, the the, the chance to the possibility to write DSLs, uh, we are extremely happy with what we have been able to, to achieve with, with, with Scala. Florian has uh, done a lot of work with the Scala macros and for our browser solution, which we'll take a look at uh, a little bit later. We, um, we also use Scala JS, Scala JS. Um, so uh, Scala is for us, uh, seems to be an ideal solution for creating what, what we here wanted to achieve, which is basically more or less uh, its own language for creating user interfaces in a, in a uh, convenient way. Uh, that was a bit too early. So. so the first focus was um, mainly on user interfaces. And uh, as I said, very important for us was the cross-platform aspect of it. Uh, right once run anywhere, which is, has been a, a hype kind of paradigm for a long time. And um, uh, Java is, the Java platform is, is suffering, I think, in competition with especially HTML-based solutions uh, because it doesn't run in browsers. Uh, and uh, even on the iOS, it's, uh, of course, very limited. But with the JavaFX uh, community, we have uh, got a couple of solutions uh, f which uh, helps us uh, very much to get uh, that goal uh, going. And uh, we are actually now capable of running uh, one piece of source code written in SimpliFX on all those platforms that you see on the screen now. Um, including the browser. I have to say the browser solution is not industrially ready yet, but you will see it working today. So we can, we can run, you can create your own uh, app written in SimpliFix, uh, and it runs on Android and iOS, so you can do classical app development with SimpliFix. And as a spin-off, so to speak, you can run it on desktops, on TV setup boxes, on the Internet of Things, like the Raspberry Pi, which, which uh, is actually pretty much supported from the JavaFX community, which we profit from. And what you will see today is that the same piece of source code runs through the browser. I have to say through and not in, because uh, 
we don't want to come with anything which is technically wrong here, but you can start the same application through the browser and it runs in a surprisingly performance way, uh, although the business logic actually is running on the server. So in the JavaFX community, there has been a couple of projects going on for a couple of years which are focusing on the issue of making Java run in the browser. Uh, one is called uh, Back to Browser, which is also uh, pretty strongly influenced from a guy from Munich who we know. And um, we are based in, based in Munich as well. And uh, there is another project which I've forgotten the name of. Uh, so there are two or three projects out there, but they have a totally different approach. They try to run JVMs written in JavaScript, for instance, inside of the browser, and, uh, and which is a very nice approach, and I'm sure they will be successful in the end, but I think still that has some performance issues which are hard to deal with. Uh, we have a totally different approach. We let the JVM stay away from the, from the client. It runs on the server, and uh, we uh, make sure that the, the presentation is happening in the, on the desktop in the browser. So we are using Scala.js to make that happen in the browser. So it also means security issues are taken away from the client. You, you basically have our driver only running in the browser uh, and all the business log logic runs in the server. Uh, that means also if you have heavy computation, uh, if you have an app with heavy computation requirements, uh, which um, would have problems to run on a mobile device, um, you can still run it with this kind of architecture because the computation, the major computation, is uh, taking place in the server. And what happens on the client is pretty constant, very independent of how heavy the real business logic actually is. So we think it's an interesting approach. Of course, it also has some drawbacks. If you have very, very heavy load of animations. Uh, the bandwidth requirements are increasing a lot. Um, although we have, have a simulation, a planet simulation here, which is a good test for this, which you will see, which is doing a lot of animations and do need a lot of updates, which is running well. So we are very happy with the results and the benchmarks which we have achieved uh, with, with this architecture. And uh, uh, what we think is very interesting with this is that the security issues are taken away from the, uh, the uh, clients, from the offices, and down to the, to the uh, administrative areas in, in the computer centers. So that's what the security people want to have. So we're very excited to, to show this to you, although we don't have uh, real business applications uh, running this today, but at least you can see some samples which shows that it's working. Mm -hmm. the, um, uh, the focus up till now has been on, 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 on the UI, as we said, uh, very much focus on, fo focusing on uh, create, uh, offering capabilities for, for you as a programmer to uh, to write uh, sexy user applications, sexy user interfaces. Um, and uh, uh, we are, uh, since a couple of months, also starting to try to extend that concept to, uh, to, to make it a distributed solution working with ACA and um, so that the data binding actually uh, is, uh, is taking place in, in a distributed environment so that, that you can write enterprise applications with less overhead or less extra work than you would normally be used to do. So. Um, we'll just start, start a small sample for you to see uh, what is uh, actually um, possible to do with little amount of code. Uh, we are here showing uh, a prominent guy from the uh, Oracle Java community, his name is Jasper Pott. He wrote this application uh, um, just as a fun application, 
which is a play uh, playlist. Uh, it's an audio player for for a playlist, uh, which has uh, the possibility to to change the frequencies. You can, of course, change the volume, and uh, you can here play uh, a playlist. So it's nothing magic, but if you look at the source code, you will be amazed. Uh, the original Java code was about 30 pages, written by one of the top gurus of Oracle. Uh, we wrote it down to five pages with Simplifix, very readable code, very easy to understand, and that is the factor, the, the, the relationship which we see, we have done that with a couple of other uh, uh, tutorials from, from different people, uh, and we see that one to five is, is a very uh, um, standard kind of relation that we easily uh, achieve. So, yeah, and you can skip in the playlist and and play. So it, it, it's the application itself is nothing spectacular, but I think what what is 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 um, nice about it is the source code itself, how easy it is to read and maintain the code because it's very, very express, expressive, very concise. Boilerplate is totally taken out, which is one goal of, of our language, so. Okay. So as I said, just a sample to show what is possible to do relatively easily with, with, with Simplifix. And those applications, as I said, they run everywhere. So you write it once and you deploy it anywhere. So um, it runs on iOS. It's using um, um, a tool which is uh, not our uh, honor. It's a tool called RoboVM, which makes it uh, also run on in the app store because it basically uh, packages it as an app uh, iOS app so so it converts the the uh, uh, all the Java byte code, byte code or the whole uh, the whole deployment which which we uh, which we produce is being then converted by RoboVM and then you can just uh, put it into the, the app store and then it's uh, it's working uh, that's not our our work, but we we benefit from it. Similar thing is happening on Android. Uh, there is um, somebody from the JavaFX community uh, sitting different places of the world in Belgium, in Russia, um, and some other places. A small group in Sweden, um, and they have done a similar work for the uh, for Android, uh, so that uh, you can write one piece of source code for both. Actually, that is not just working for Simplifix. That could work also for standard, uh, other standard Java applications. So here we have, um, I, show, I will tell you a little bit of the background why we are showing some pictures of some people here and so on. Um, the picture is, uh, is a person named uh, James Weaver or Jim Weaver. He is uh, he's working for Oracle and he's uh, keynote speaker, that's Java 1 and so on. And we met him uh, and he uh, demoed, he had just demoed his application which he call, called a Zen guitar, which is again just a fun application. He used the MIDI API and, and uh, you can play different instruments. Um, it, it's hard to, to, to demo this without a touch screen because it, is, it runs on a touch screen and trying to produce some sound here and uh, it can, you can change the instruments and um, so, and you can uh, you can uh, use three D effects and so on. So, uh, so James Weir wanted to, to to make some sample which could could show uh, the three D effects of Java FX, and uh, he was uh, asking us because it was pretty. Yeah, I think he liked Simplifix and the syntax and what you could express uh, in, a, in, a, in a different way than with Java uh, with it. So he asked us to, to um, take his source code and, and rewrite it into Simplifix, which we did. And, uh, and the, the same result, or one to five, 
was was easily achieved, and I think uh, it was a source code which is very easy to, to read in the end. Um, I, I thought about it after the presentation was made. I should have given, I should have written all the links in here because this is a YouTube video of James Weaver using this application on the Microsoft Surface, where he plays a guitar, so to speak, on the on the Microsoft Surface together with a real bass player. So if you would run this uh, this video, which is uh, you can easily find it on the internet, also if you Google a little bit, then it's a it's a kind of fun. They 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 play a duet with a Surface and a, and, a, and a guitar. But it, it's a small piece of source code that is, that is basically uh, what we are trying to, uh, to communicate. Hmm? Yeah. Okay. yeah, I was going to open the, the uh, I don't know whether it's the internet connection here, I was going to open this uh, link, which doesn't seem to work. Let me see. Here it goes. Okay, we will not open this, uh, we will not take a look at it. It is a fun one. If you want to uh, have some fun to look at, you can, you can open it yourself. Um, I was just told by my colleague I'm too slow. We have to speed up. So, um, let's, let's, let's give you a little bit of, of introduction to what Java FX is and what, what SimpliFX is. Um, because some of you, uh, many of you actually knew Java, know JavaFX, but um, you see here uh, a lot of packages which, which basically representing the whole JavaFX library. And we are trying here, to, we are trying here to, uh, to uh, show you uh, what kind of major components we have here with uh, SimpliFX. Uh, we have introduced a term which we call expression binding, which is very related to, 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 the, word, uh, to the term data binding, of course, but um, it's rather powerful, and I think data binding is not really covering everything we, we are trying to do. Um, we have uh, extended some of the classes in JavaFX with a term which we have also introduced called extension classes, which is which is uh, comparable to the uh, implicit clauses in Scala. Uh, but as you know, the implicit clauses can't really have any local members. Uh, with extension clauses, we can. So you can have an instantiated object, uh, and we can actually, on the fly, extend it with, with more members and more methods and so on, which we are using a lot internally also for, for in SimpliFix. Um, I will I will open here just some snippet, very small uh, snippets of source code, just to show you a little bit of the very simple standard way of uh, of, of uh, creating nodes in the so-called scene graph of JavaFX. JavaFX is, is representing the whole user interface as a set of nodes in a so-called scene graph. And any change on the screen is, is, is taking place in the scene graph, if, which then triggers updates uh, on, on the presentation device. That's how it works. And uh, we have um, come up with, uh, with a pattern here and, uh, and a best practice way of using SimpliFX, which we think make it very, very simple to build up your scene graph in your application. On the left side, you see there is a, the way of, of calling a, a class called myType uh, from the uh, higher level uh, application. Um, and, um, and the myType extends some class. It will typically be a, a node class, uh, which, uh, uh, which you have in, in, uh, in JavaFX or in the core of SimpliFX. It could be a so-called parent, or it could be a group. It could be uh, a different kind of, of classes which represent one node or a subtree in the scene graph. So what you do is you you call you call um, the type or the the class which is basically an extended node or a subtree in the scene graph, and you do it in a JSON kind of way. Uh, you uh, you have the p one two three here which you set 
at the instantiation time, you, you, you basically set the properties, and those properties are what we could call bindables, what I said in the, meaning, in, in the beginning. And those properties are very, very much more powerful than, than the, you have with the normal variables. Of course, they're using the setters and getters uh, kind of uh, me uh, mechanisms in Scala, which makes it very much easier to create those, uh, those um, um, properties. Um, but uh, but uh, we're also using macros to allow for you to use those properties as would they be simple variables. So the syntax doesn't become more complicated for you. You don't have to call the setters and getters. Well, that's the case in Scala in any way. But you also don't have to uh, call a lot of those internal methods which they represent it. So you just, you just set in a very intuitive way uh, for a simple language. You just um, instantiate it by setting those properties. And the arrow left is the binding operator which um, uh, allows you to use any arithmetic expression or any kind of expression, any function on the, on the right side of the operator. So you basically don't have any uh, constraint compared to if you do a regular assignment. You can use binding if, uh, with exact the same syntax. As opposed to some others like JavaFX and so on where you have a very clumsy kind of, of syntax for, for expressing binding. Uh, 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 or, or uh, bindings between properties. Okay. I'm really slow, I'm hearing. Okay. Then um, I will just, I'll just show you uh, how you can, uh, we just have some simple effects which, uh, which we can uh, apply here. It's just a couple of lines of source code. That's the point you just to, to, to you just add the, the formulas on sinus curves uh, to, uh, to the uh, effect class, which is, is an extended um, kind of functionality compared to what JavaFX offers, and um, makes it very easy then to, to, to make some simple effects. Uh, the effects themselves, as I say, you code them with a couple of lines. And uh, this was an effect which Florian wrote uh, as he was in the cafe here in Amsterdam, I guess. Uh, it doesn't make any sense, but uh, but uh, uh, it shows how easy Best it is. Best application ever. <laughs> how easy it is okay. to deal with that. Okay. So no. Uh, Give me the microphone, <laughs> please. Okay. He has the microphone. Okay. Um, hello. Um, it might get a little bit flashy because of lack of time. Um, this is a simple slide which explains uh, a little bit how the binding um, at SimpleFX works. At the code, we first have A equals 1, B equals 2, and then we make a sum declaration which is binded to A plus B. And when A is, gets the value of 3, the sum gets updated at some time in the future to 4. That's the basic functionality of the um, bind operation which is uh, very elemental in SimpleFX. And here we see again the uh, pattern for, um, for classes, how they are instantiated. Okay. Um, we skip this one. Okay. Um, this is a part where we are showing the web application. This is a small application I wrote some years ago. It's a small uh, Minesweeper game with uh, one special feature. Um, you're not allowed to play anywhere where you can't know the solution and when you fail you don't get the places where the mines are but where you could know that no mines are which makes the game a little bit different but <clears throat> when you're running it um, on the web with the other um, JavaFX solution it might not be uh, good uh, to run everything on, on JavaScript because this computation might take a while and I'm now showing the um, browser solution which, con which contains for example the MindTeeper which is based on the same code. No. Okay. Which can be played very well and also works fine on the mobile on the web which is 
uh, kind of unique for a Java FX web solution which uh, because the other solutions don't even work well on the desktop and we have also some other games like this untangled game which I will show you now um, at the presentation. These games were on the rolls uh, in uh, one to two hours during a night in a hotel which we had uh, uh, at some other conference that we actually was in Holland and he came down in the morning. We were in the bar and drinking beer and, and he went to the hotel in the morning when we talked to him he said well I rolled the game during the night mm -hmm. it took me two hours. This is a hundred line of code, lines of code. Okay. Um, just some general words about the bindables and the bindings. Um, the bindables are really u easy to use. You just, um, when you declare a variable, a var or a val, you just have to add this add bind annotation and then it will become a bindable and now you have this uh, error method to do a binding and you can put any generic expression at the binding. And when any bindable at the expression changes, it gets updated. Um, it's easily typed because the variable um, you have where you put the bind annotation uh, has still the original type so when you write uh, add bind var uh, e is equals uh, an int number then the type of e is still int and you never see any other type. Um, and the bindings are really powerful uh, when you get used to it. They are simple to use, you just have to replace the equals operator with the error operator which makes refactoring easy and the decision whether you make a assignment or a binding is not anymore um, a question of work uh, you have to do but you can um, make it a, uh, it's a question about what you want to have. The bindings are order independent because it doesn't matter um, in which order you declare the binding because at the end they all get updated which makes the code um, more flexible so you can arrange the code in a more logical way and don't have to make sure that the declarations are in the right order. Um, they are elegant and declarative and I would say they are really addictive. Okay. Uh, okay. Here is this code of the untangled game again. Mm, it's about uh, 100 lines. Um, one third of it doesn't, is more about line intersections. And the upper part is kind of the heart where the corner and edges are defined. And we will now ta take a look at a part of the, uh, at the implementation of the corner. Um, what? At the corner we have the, uh, this delta center declaration which is bounded to delta de track distance which I will explain now. Um, um, we have the untangle we want to allow, allow this um, tracking animation and it can easily explain uh, what should happen. Um, when we push down the mouse button um, we want to uh, says that the change of the mouse position is the same as the change of the center of the circle and this can be easily expressed in a one liner. Track distance here is a special variable which only um, tracks the change of the mouse position when the mouse button is down. Um, this delta syntax is very flexible. It uh, works in both directions so you can um, have the delta on the right side and also on the left side and you could also put generic expressions inside the delta. Um, yes. Okay. Um, let's have fun with delta time because delta hmm we are not haven't really seen it often for um, user interface code but more for mathematics or physics. So what could we do with it? Let's make a small physics simulation. Um, and the first declaration says the change of the position is, is equal to speed multiplied by the change of time, which is sound. 
um, the change of speed is the same as force multiplied by um, the change of time divided by mass. Okay. And now we are writing a small um, Newton, uh, a small simulation with the Newton's rules for planets. We make the declaration for force. Force is the sum of uh, the Newton declaration of all the other planets. And, no. and the result look, no. The result looks like this, which is a, a nice uh, planet simulator. The gravity of each planet depends on the, the mass of all the other planets. So it's, uh, there are a lot of bindings here. Mm. It's, all, it's all based on the binding declaration. So as uh, so the heart of the program is only those, those uh, four or five lines. We also have this uh, planet simulator with a diff operator for the uh, differential, uh, which is a little bit shorter, but it's a, I think it's a little bit more expressive to do it with the delta because it's a little bit more abstract and more fun f for presentations. Um, Okay, one more point about um, binding and garbage collections. Um, SimpleFX has a built-in mechanism for avoiding memory leaks. Um, the following sample illustrates a problem. Uh, at first we have a bindable which is global. In this sample it is called heap size and contains uh, the amount of heap size which is currently used. And, as, and the second is a text element which wants to display the user how much heap size is currently used. Um, this text element might be removed from the scene graph at some point, but the heap size must have a listener to update the text variable, which of course isn't suitable because this would mean, okay, um, this heap size would reference forever the as a text um, node and it wouldn't be able to be garbage collected because heap size is global and global variables will stay forever. You know, text depends on heap size, heap size is global, problem, text is in danger of not being collected ever. Um, in SimpleFX the behavior is that the text will be collected and this is achieved by um, weak references which are smartly used in this case. This is really important because otherwise this binding declaration couldn't be used at large scale software because then you would just go crazy and would have memory leaks at all places. Okay, I think we are out of time. Huh? Yet. Yes, but then we can make more questions. Yeah. We, we have, uh, well, how many minutes? Yeah. Oh. Okay, we we actually uh, didn't go, uh, didn't came further than half of the uh, presentation, which was my fault, I think. Um, but we uh, should leave those five minutes that we have left for any questions maybe. Any questions? Very new company, right? Uh, we are bo both technologists and, uh, and we are discussing it all the time. But um, the, the product is now so new that we are starting to market it so actually it is uh, still in a, in a kind of discussion mode. But the state of it is we are going to use, very, very plausibly, we are going to use the standard freemium model, which means um, uh, you will have a product for free, which already is available actually, but we have to admit the documentation on our internet side is, is not really enough for you to be able to use it. And there will be a pro version uh, at some later stage, uh, which will have a price which you definitely can afford. Um, and. Uh, 
at some level we will open source a part of it. You might have recognized that this presentation is, it couldn't be PowerPoint, right? Or keynotes, it's, it wouldn't work with the features we have here. The application is running in the presentation, right? Um, this was written in Simplifix uh, a couple of days ago, in a couple of nights, basically. So this is going to be an open source, for instance. So we will, we will, we will bring out uh, several kind of, uh, uh, of, of uh, tools and, and, and so on around it and make it open source. So to make it short, the, the, uh, there will be a free version on our, uh, downloadable from our internet site and better documented than, than it is now very soon. Um, small notes to the free version. Um, the Sang guitar sample and the Planet Simulator and the Untangle are available on GitHub, so it's actually free and you can use it, which is maybe a bit shorter answer. <laughs> okay, any more questions? Um, um, yes, that's definitely a good question. Um, it majorly depends on how much uh, native uh, uh, libraries you are calling because when you are l using a lot of native uh, calls then you will get problems but it's possible to write really cross-platform applications which really have the same co source for all versions. As a Minesweeper, for example, it works on the Android, it works uh, on the presentation, it works on Map, and always the same code. Of course, there are libraries uh, which are not uh, the same on different platforms. So, of course, then you have to, it will, it will, you would make the abstraction layer of more and more libraries, you would do the language binding into more and more libraries as time goes. Uh, so it depends, of course, on how, how much specific kind of libraries you are using. But uh, the, the, the core of the application will, will definitely be one and the same. I also should mention, of course, you have the reactive, reactive UI kind of, kind of issues. Of course, when you have different uh, screen sizes, you have to have different uh, layout on your user interface. So that's also something on our roadmap to create some tools for that so that it can be easier to do. So, of course, if you have cross-platform, cross uh, or, or, or different uh, devices or presentations, uh, devices with different screens, of course you have to do something extra. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, uh, is there any tooling around it? Like, how is, how is the deployment in case of the different classroom or slide? Uh, is it seamless? I want to, I don't know, I have a checklist where I, I say, I want this to be a web app. Actually, the web the, to deploy it on the web platform is, is yeah is 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 a checkbox more or less this, the, because it happens to be the easiest for us. When you use the Robo VM and the different tools on the Android, we are using uh, third-party tools, uh, and we have our scripts uh, which uh, which work today, which uh, makes it very easy to do. It's it's uh, on the level that you're used to when you deploy. Uh, so. Um, it's not really a checklist, but it's easy. Yeah. Um, you said that you uh, could do the logic for the application on the server side. Yes. But is that is that tunable, right? If I don't want it on the server side, if you know my customers mm. have got smartphones and I don't want to load my servers, can I say actually I want all this to be done by and on the smartphone, is not, not, you have both options. You could uh, use our web uh, solution, the web architecture, which runs uh, it on the server, and use the HTML uh, 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 solution on the, on the smartphone. That's one option. But, but you have the other option, which is to use the native one, which, uh, which means everything runs on your, or on your mobile device. That's right, yeah. That's right. More questions?
Okay, then thank you very much for coming and listening and uh, hope you enjoyed it.